Okie dokie. So what up guys? I'm back here with another video. CSS Flexbox Part 2. So hopefully we can finish this by tonight, by today. I don't know how you guys feeling, but let's get this party started, shall we? So sometimes the flex items within the flex container do not fill all the space in the container. It is common to want to tell the CSS how to align and space out the flex items a certain way. Fortunately, the justify content property has several options to do this. But first, there is some important terminology to understand before reviewing those options. We're not going to go through that illustration because we're not visual learners. We are cool kids. So, there are several options for those how for how to space flex items along the line that is mm, the main axis. One of the most commonly used justify content center, which aligns all the flex items to the center inside the flex container. Other options include flex start, align items to the start of the flex container. Oops, I'm so sorry if you guys hear that in the background. So, align items to the start of the flex container for those for... for Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I don't know where that is coming from. For a row, this pushes the align this pushes the items to the left of the container for a column. This pushes the items to the top of the container. This default alignment is n alignment if no justify content is specified. So flex start. So justify center flex start will put the things from left to right. Flex end will align the items to the end of the container. So it'll, it'll, it'll go from right to left. S or it just pushes it to the right of the container. Space between, yeah, as you guys guessed it, aligns item to the center of the main axis with extra space between the items. And then space around, similar to this, but but the first and last items are not locked to the edges of the container and the space is distributed around all the items I don't know why I'm, I keep yawning guys I'm so sorry space evenly distributes space evenly between the flex items with a full space at either the end of the flex container either at the end of the flex container wow so let's check it. So box and box container gets the justify. Oops. Justify content. And this is going to be center. Wow, look at that. Very cool. Okay, so now let's do the justify content for the header profile name. And let's see, justify content. And then they're telling us we can do anything we want. So let's go center. Let's see how that looks like. Okay, how about flex start? Wow, it's like no change at all. Space between. Wow, nothing. You want to? You guys want to know why? It's because there's only one item, which is this item right here. I th I'm pretty sure it's just this item right here. But yeah. Oh. Wow, maybe it's because I spell justify. Oh my god. It's probably because I just spelled it wrong. Flex and. 
Yeah, you see how now things are different. Flex, start at the top, at the bottom, space between. Wow, I think center is way better. Center, boom. Very nice, very nice. So align items is pretty much the same thing. The align items property is similar to justify content. Um, CSS offers the align items property to align flex items along the cross axis for a row to tell its CSS how to push the item with the entire row up or down. Okay, so you tell me align items talks about rows. And then justify content talks about columns. Okay, so try. Okay, for example, show the property in the action align items to the center. So align items center. So you guys can see it's talking about rows very cool so if we did align items align what is it called um align or justify content <laughs> justify content all right so you guys see how that moved in columns and then Align items moves in rows and then yeah very cool now let's set the align items for the button align Items, what is it? Center. Cool. And then the thing is to like flex start. Start would work. Flex and would work. Space around. I don't know how that would work because like there's only one item there. But what we're going to do is center it. Very cool. Sorry. Ask me later. Okay, dokey. So, however, using the flex wrap tells the CSS property we can do all sorts all sort of things. So, oh, oh, very cool. So, if we put flex wrap on the box container right here, we can wrap the items. So, flex wrap and then wrap it cool so that does something weird oh it fills the bottom that's right here guys the bottom is right there wow so make sure everything is nice and even and then wrap reverse so it makes it upside down very cool so what we want is wrap we wrap it up, just rack it up, rack it up, rack it up. And then, so for all the properties, apply the flex container, the parent of the flex items. However, there are several useful properties for the flex items. The first flex, the first is the flex string <coughs> property. When it is used, it allows an item to shrink if the flex container is too small. Items shrink when the width of the parent container is smaller than the combined width of all flex items with. The flex shrink property takes the number as values. The higher 
the number more is shrink compared to the other items in the container. For example, if one item has flex shrink value 1 and the other has flex shrink 3. Mm. All these flex, all these shrink, all these little baby shrink things. Honestly, guys, hmm, flex shrink to both. Okay, so flex shrink one. Oops, flex shrink one is not gonna shrink. What? How about this one? Flex. So you guys see this takes more of the space than this one, I'm guessing. Box two is what? Orange. Interesting. Uh, so the higher of the higher the value, the more it'll take pretty much so one it'll take more two is baby cool i guess you could say the flex rim property takes the number or as values the higher the number the more it will shrink compared to other items for example flex shrink run value one and the other flex shrink value three the one with the three will shrink three times as much as the Oh, so this one shrinks two times. This one didn't even shrink at all. That's why it's big. Yes. So what happens if it goes with a three? It gets even smaller. What if this one goes with a shrink of two? They're like the same thing. What if this one goes more? Ooh. How about can it go to four? Ooh. Can it go to five? Ooh. Can it go to seven? Oh man, very okay. Okay, but yeah, guys, I'm so sorry. I feel like this is where I'm gonna stop now. Cause, or maybe I'll do one more. Maybe I'm close to finishing. Maybe because I'm getting tired. Use the flex grow. So let's make this flex grow. So flex shrink shrinks the thing. The not 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 ugh. I guess this is just the opposite. Flex grow one. Yes, so that made it grow real big and nice and strong. Let's check out this one. Flex grow number two. Wow, so this has grown more than this one because one is bigger than two. So this grows only one size bigger than it was before, and this grows two ways as big as it was before. Damn, I should have just seen that. Okay. So. The unit uses. Fl the flex basis property is the initial item size before the CSS. Okay, so flex basis is going to be 10 EM. So this is going to be the initial size. So flex, this is, this is going to be the initial size. This is going to be before the other. Interesting. So what if we add flex shrink or flex grow one? It's gonna grow more from that initial size and flex grow two from that size it grew that much are you serious so what if that's one and this is two wow shrink flex shrink
interesting. Wow. Okay. And I still didn't. Okay, so there's a flex shorthand property. There is a shortcut available to set several flex properties at once. Flex grow, flex shrink, flex spaces, and set together by using the flex. For example, flex 1010 will set flex grow, flex shrink, and flex spaces. The default property settings are flex 01 auto. Add the CSS property flex to both. Okay. So let's add the flex to both this one. So flex, and this is going to have the value of grow one or grow two. Then it wants me to shrink it by two and give it a 150 of the flex spices. And oops. This, oops, this one is going to have a flex of one for flex grow, one for flex shrink, and 150 for the biases. I don't know how to say it, guys. I'm sorry. Then what? Is this responsive? Hmm. I'm on 88. Should I continue? <laughs> Okie dokie guys, so add the CSS property order to both give box one order of two. What? What is order? Order property is used to tell CSS how to flow how the order of the flex item. So order of two order. I'm so sorry. So what the heck did this do? Ah, so this one tells it which one goes first and which one goes second. Interesting. The final property is the flex item self. It's used. I thought we already talked about this. Align self accepts the same. Oh. So the align self, this property allows you to adjust items individually f instead of setting them all at once. This is useful since other common adjustment techniques use CSS property flow clearer and align self accepts the same value align items and will override the value of align item property. Add the CSS property align self to both box one, box two, and then center and flex and so align self in the center and then align self in the flex and interesting so I don't really like the align self option I feel like it's really weird oh crap guys we had finished Cool. So now we're going to be going on CSS Grid next time, which is going to be tomorrow. So see you guys tomorrow.